Jehovah. Jehovah Lord of Lords and mighty God, we worship you, Jehovah. Lord. Ha, ha, ha. Jehovah, yeah. Jehovah, ha, ha. Father, we thank you tonight. The Bible says, Unto you shall all flesh come. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for the privilege, O Lord, to come to you or to call you Father. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for, for, for being gracious to us. We thank you, Father, for your hand, O Lord, among us. We thank you, Father, for your presence, O Lord, in our midst. Thank you, Father, because indeed you are with us, you are for us. The word says that if God be for us, no man can be against us. And therefore, Father, no man, no Lord, will be against us because of your mighty presence. Thank you, Father, for instilling your presence, O Lord, among us. Who are we, O Lord? We are all, we, we, we are nothing but vessels of clay. But it has pleased you, Father, to put in treasures, O Lord, in us. And we honor and we magnify you. We thank you, Father, Lord, for another snow. We thank you, Father, Lord, for what you have started to do, Lord, since yesterday. Thank you, Father, for what you did, O oh Lord, in the morning, in the evening. Thank you for what you do, what you have done today in the morning. Thank you for what you will do now. Thank you for what you will do Wednesday, Thursday. Thank you for Friday. We bless your name and we give you all the glory. Father, unto you we have come tonight, O oh Lord. Father, let the heavens be opened upon us. Father, hear our prayers tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Let nothing stand between us and the answers to our prayers. We ask that you cleanse us from every work of unrighteousness. We ask, O oh Father, that you breathe upon every dead areas of our lives in Jesus' name. Father, let testimonies, O oh Lord, manifest, O oh Lord, in, this, in the gathering of tonight. We give you all the praise and glory. Father, I yield myself to you. Holy Spirit, have your way in the name of Jesus. Take charge in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, it is your service. They are your people. Father, Lord, do as you have said. Do as you have promised. In the precious name of Jesus, we give you all the praise and glory. Thank you, Father, Lord, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Please be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. We welcome to snow. Turn to the person sitting beside you. Say, welcome to snow. Hallelujah. We want to bless God for what the Lord has been doing. What God has started in the name of Jesus, it will come to perfection, to manifestation in your lives in the precious name of Jesus. We want to thank God for our Father and the Lord that the Lord has been using for us. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We appreciate the grace and we, the grace of God upon his life and we appreciate you, sir. Thank you also for this opportunity. We'll never take it for granted. Amen. Hallelujah. God is in the business of blessing his people and he will do so tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Tonight we're talking about battle cry. Battle cry. Is somebody ready to pray? Somebody say thank you Jesus. Battle cry. Battle cry. I want to talk about being a champion in the battle of life. Being a champion in the battle of life. That's what we're going to be praying about. God wants us to be champions in every area of in every area of life. Any battle that comes that comes that comes that comes to us. God does not want us to be fight God does not want us to you know to run away from battles. And that is why when you look when you look into the scriptures you will see people of God that there is no provision for for any armor covering the back. In the book of Ephesians you will see that there is no provision there is no provision, Ephesians chapter 6. There's no provision, you know, for uh, uh, any armor covering the back. So any battle that comes to us, we must fight it even to, to victory. Amen, in the name of Jesus. I want us to please turn our Bibles to the uh, text for today. 
uh, for text for this note, Joshua 6, 20 to 21. The Bible says, so the people shouted. Somebody say, the people shouted. All right. So the Bible says, so the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the saw. With the edge of the saw. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 13. I, I quickly want to, I want to read that quickly also. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole hammer that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Amen. What are battles and what are wars? A battle is a combat in warfare between two or more armed forces. When you talk about battle, you're talking about, you're talking about a warfare. Either between, you know, armed forces, between individuals. But when you talk about wars, a battle can be won, a battle can be two. But when you talk about war, war is, war has to do with, you know, repeated battles, unending battles. When you find out that a battle is repeating itself, one after the other, one, two, you are counting it, it's recurring and recurring, then it's no longer a battle, it's a war. This evening, we're going to be praying. And one thing I discover, people of God, is that whenever, whenever there is a battle, it is evident that something is about to change hands. Something is about to change hands. If I call somebody here that, okay, we're going to fight against, we're going to fight about something. If I beat you, I get it. If, if you beat me, you get it. We know very well that at the end of the whole thing, someone will get something. Something is going to change hands. So when the enemy is after your life repeatedly over and over and over and over, it's because there is something valuable that he's interested in. There is something that he wants to take. There is something that he wants to take. But the Bible says that we are more than conqueror. Amen. God wants to teach our hands to war in this snow. And that is why it is very important that you, call, that, you, that, that, that you come with the whole of your heart. You come with faith and you pray and you don't miss any of the sessions because you don't know when your visitation will come. You see, it is in a battle, it is the loser, it is the person that will lose that has a lot. You know, that, 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 is at his, that, that is at disadvantage. When a battle comes up, it's the, pe the person that loses has, is, at, is at disadvantage. And you know something, people of God, consistent battle winners, they are called what? They are called champions. They are called what? Champions. So that's why the, the scripture says that we are more than conqueror. Who is a conqueror? A conqueror is somebody that overcomes a battle. And now the Lord is telling us that you are more, meaning that you are more than those battle. God has equipped us with everything that we need in order to be able to win every battle of life. Victory shall be ours in the precious name of Jesus. Romans 8.37 says, Yet in all these things, despite all the things that you are going through, despite all the things that is bringing us down, the scripture says that you are more than a conqueror. So therefore, you should not disappoint heaven by you should not disappoint heaven by crying. You should not disappoint heaven by wailing. You should not disappoint heaven by being moody whenever anything comes against you. Because God has given us the power; He has equipped us to overcome that particular battle. The reason you are here today is because you overcame one battle or the other. You you overcame an order. Is there anyone here that has never gone through something? They did not come, right? Oh, so that meaning that the people that are even watching us, they've even been through something, right? 
Yeah, so for you, to have, for, 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 for you to be where you are today, it's because you overcame something. So today we are going to be praying. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Battles reveals your strength or your weakness. If a battle comes against you and you lost the battle, it is to tell you that you are weak in such areas. But you know something? That he who lives, you know, to, yeah, yeah, he, he, he who lives the fight, you know, he lives to fight another day. A man of God said he had a dream. He said in the dream, he saw himself in a casket. And he was looking at it. He said, ah, how can I? He said, this devil is stupid. He said, how can I be in a casket and I'm still watching my own funeral? So he woke up and he was hungry. I, and, he, you know, he started praying and he started praying. He started destroying covens of wickedness and doing all the other things. And he went back to sleep. And he, and he dreamed another dream. He dreamt another dream. And this time, he was sitting on a throne. Why? Because the devil had to compensate him because he knew his right. So don't give in. Don't give in in the battle with whatever battle that comes against you. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter uh, 20 verse 12, he says, um, uh, Joseph was saying here, he says, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude. That is coming against us. For we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. I tell you, people of God, battles reveal your strength or weaknesses. And you cannot afford to win. You cannot afford to lose any battle in this age that we are in. Why? Because the enemy is merciless. The enemy is what? Is mercy. They are merciless. They, they, will, not, they will not listen to anything. They don't take pleas. So whenever they come against you, it is victory. And that is what God wants to instill in this snow. Hallelujah. In the book of Isaiah chapter 37 verse 3, it says, And they said to him, Thus says Ezekiah, a, a, battle came against, a, a, a battle came against God's people. And Ezekiah says, Hey, he said, this is a day of trouble. This is a day, uh, uh, this is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. For the children have come to bath. And there is no strength to bring them forth. You cannot afford to faint in the day of battle. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 says, If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Fainting is in the day of adversity is yielding to the enemy. It is losing ground to the enemy. Therefore, we have come tonight to build strength. We have come to tonight to combat, to combat the devil and enforce victory. When you understand who you are dealing with, people of God, it will give you, it will give you, it, it will give you an insight to how much you should prepare for the battle. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says that the adversary, the devil, is, he walks about like a roaring lion. Another version says like a wounded lion. Seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says he is like, he is not the lion. He is like the lion. But when you see somebody in a costume, you know, like somebody sent uh, a WhatsApp video about us, about a lady. They, they, they lured the lady into a gorilla's den. Into a, into a gorilla's cage, rather. But meanwhile, the gorilla in the cage was human. So, and the, the lady was so, so, so terrified. So later when she now realized that, oh, it was human, she was so hungry. <laughs> so he is like a lion. He is not the lion. The, the, we have only one lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The fight that we are fighting. It is not that the enemy will come against you and you say, okay, I must register at the gym. I must build up my biceps. I must build up my muscles so that I can be able to fight. The Bible said that there are people that we are fighting against, the forces that we are fighting against, they are not flesh and blood. You cannot even see them. 
He said, but they are, but we are fighting against principalities. We are fighting against powers. We are fighting against rulers of darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Some time ago when we started the school of deliverance, our pastor took us through our principalities, powers, our rulers of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, and thrones and dominions, if, 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 if we all still remember. So these are the people, these are the forces that we are fighting against. These are the forces, and these forces, people of God, these are the forces that they derive joy in wasting the lives of people. They derive joy in wasting destiny, in, in wasting resources. It does not cost them anything. These are the powers that take offense without you offending them. They find a reason for offense without giving you an opportunity to defend yourself. They launch the first attack, you know, to test your strength and to show their power. I learned about a minister that was preaching. He was preaching and all of a sudden, he slumped and he died. And people were like, what happened? What happened? And a small girl just came and said, ah, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't, mean to ki- I didn't mean to kill him. I just said I should just test. I just said I should just test the power. Right, Adabino? I just said I should. I didn't know. I didn't know he was going to die. I just said I should test the power. And he slumped and he died right there. We're talking about powers that are merciless. So these are powers that whenever they come against you, it is not for you to sit down and say, okay, yes, what am I going to do now? It is for you to it is for you to give up your strength. It is for you to stand up. It is for you to it is for you to start waging. It is for, uh, for for you to start waging war. For you to start doing things. For you to engage in the spiritual battle that will give you victory. So tonight we are going to be praying. Imagine the Bible says in the book of Second Second Kings chapter chapter twenty, uh, from verses one through to six to to six. Ben Hadad, the king of Syria, he came, and. Uh, he, he told Ahab, he said, do you know, he said that your silver, your gold, he said your loveliest wives, meaning that the ugly ones, don't bring the ugly ones, but your, <laughs> your loveliest wives, he said your choice children, he said they are mine. How can somebody just go into somebody's kingdom and say, okay, and, it, and he did not stop at that. He said, he gave a date, he said tomorrow about this time. I'm going to send my messenger. He will come into your place. He will take all your loveliest wives. He will take all your children. And they will also ransack your kingdom. And any good thing that they find there, they will bring to me. And when the man said, what you told me before, I can do. But this one that you have told me, that you have said, he said, I will not do it. And he grew angry. He said that the gods will do certain, certain things to him if he does not destroy Ahab, destroy God's people about that time the next day. What did he do to him? So these are the forces that will not take place. So tonight is a night of prayer. And I want you to please know, people of God, that the battles that we are fighting, they are older than us. It did not start with us. Therefore, for you to be victorious, we need to engage forces. We need to engage the power that is above all. We need to engage the almighty that can make tremendous things happen in righteousness. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12, he says, Revelation 12, 7, he said, and war broke out in heaven. Remember what I said earlier? Remember what we said earlier? If it is a battle, a battle is one, right? One, two. But when it, is re- when it is reoccurring over and over and over and over, then it is a war. The Bible said that war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That whole serpent, the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, he was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And what happened? Verse 12. Verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Why? Because they were able to, they were able to drive out. They were able to expel the devil. And guess where they expelled the devil to? Huh? 
No, no, no. no. <laughs> now, there was war in heaven. War started in heaven. So, but heaven pushed the war to earth. Heaven pushed the war to earth. And heaven is rejoicing. Thank you. Thank God. There is no more war in heaven. But you are not woe unto you. Because this man caused issues in heaven. And therefore, he has come on earth also. And he will also cause, you know, he will, he will continue. He came to the earth to continue the fight. And the Bible said that what to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you. And he did not come, you know, with patting his head. He said, just go, just, just go. He said he came with a what? A great wrath. Because he knows that he has a short time. He has a short time. Tonight we are going to be praying. We're going to be praying, people of God. Whenever the enemy comes, the Bible said that the enemy comes like a lion. When you see a lion, you know, when you see a lion, when you see something that looks like a lion, and you know, the thing just like, you know, comes at, at you like that, you will be afraid. You will be afraid. And that is what the devil, that is the tactic that the devil is using, the tactic of fear. Fear is a great weapon that the enemy is using against God's people. When he launches an attack, to test your defense and you're giving, he knows that your defense is porous. And that's why David said in, in Psalms chapter 27, verse 1 to 3, he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. In whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh. Imagine somebody coming up to say, Okay, I have come to eat up your flesh. What will you do? Just kneel down and say, Ah, it's not my time yet. What can I do? What can I, what can I give? He said, but when the enemy came against me to eat up my flesh and my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. He said, though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war, amen. He said, though war may rise against me, in this will I be confident. In what will you be confident? Because the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Hebrews 13, 6 says, So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. When the devil comes against you as a champion, what are you supposed to do? We are supposed to showcase our God to him. He said, Come, the fight that you are coming to fight me, it is not me that you are fighting. Let me, tell, let me introduce you to the one that you are fighting. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, that when Goliath came against David, Goliath started conjuring. He started saying certain things. Or he says, the, the scripture says that Goliath started cursing David by his God. Is that not incantation? He started cursing David by his God. Then after doing the incantation, he now told David, he said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, I will give your head to the birds of the air. But thank God David was not silent. Thank God David knew his God. And that is why it is those people that know their God. It is those people that will not fidget when the enemy comes. Those people that will be strong. He said, those people that know their God, they are those that will be strong. And they will, they are, uh, they will do exploit. David said to the Philistine, you, you came to me. You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. David said, you may be big, but my God is not one. You know, my God, my God is not alone, rather. He said, my God is a God that does not work alone. He is the Lord of hosts. Amen. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. He said, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the beds of the air. Now, Goliath only talked about David. He only spoke about David. But when David was speaking, David included Goliath. He included all the Philistines. And God honored it. And it came to a point that when Goliath, the immediately Goliath fell, people of God, the Bible says that the Philistines, they scattered. 
So when the enemy comes against you as a champion, showcase what the Lord has done. Showcase your God to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we rise on our feet? Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. It's time. It's time to pray. We are praying. The Holy Spirit is what is, 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 is. The Holy Spirit is the one we can engage in winning our spiritual battles. Why? Because he will lead us and tell us specifically what to do. You should not fight as if you are beating the hair. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Je uh, Je uh, um, Luke chapter 4 verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The, uh, Jesus was able to do all these things because he was anointed to do so. The anointing is what separates you from the entanglement that is common to men. It separates you from what brings men down. Apostle told us the testimony of how when he was back in, when he was back in Africa and uh, there was a masquerade, uh, is it procession? I don't know what to call it right now. And they came and that one, the masquerade came and they wanted to, you know, to, you know, to beat, you know, to flog him with the cane. And uh, the older masquerade that could see into their spirit world, you say that, ah, he said, if you do it, you are done. Say, why? Because this one is different. He said, if you do it, you are gone. It is the spirit that helps us to fight our battles. We're going to be praying, people of God. Our God is a God that he will, he will not tell us to fight a battle without giving us the weapons to fight with. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare, they are not what? They are not carnal. But as much as you can despise it, the scripture says that they are mighty. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but the Bible says that they are mighty, mighty. The Bible says that they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So when we, when we talk about the weapons of our warfare, they are not things that we can just commonize. You may commonize it, but the scripture says that they are mighty. When you engage them, you will use them in pulling down strongholds. When you engage them, you will use them to cast down argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We're going to be praying, people of God. Thank you, Jesus. One of the weapons of the warfare that are stated in the scripture is the weapon of the word of God. Ephesians 6, 17 says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And also the, the, the weapon of prayer. We also have the weapon of worship. We have uh, the, uh, the name of Jesus. We have the weapon of the blood of Jesus and our testimonies. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by what? The word of their testimonies. So tonight we're going to be engaging, first of all, in the weapon of praise. Amen. Is somebody ready to praise the Lord? The Bible made us understand. That when they began to sing the song of praise in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 2 and chapter 20, verse 22 and 23, that the Lord sent ambushes against the people of Ammon and Moab and Montia, who had come against Judah and were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Montia to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitant of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. But let's back up a little bit. Verse 21. Verse 21 says that he appointed the people and instructed them to praise what? The beauty of his holiness. The moment they started praising the beauty of his holiness, God himself stepped in. 
And I realize, people of God, that whenever you are praising God, especially the beauty of His holiness, appreciating His holiness, you know, talking about, talking about how, how righteous and how faithful He is, God comes down. He said, He told them, He said, God specifically mentioned it to them. He said, He said that the name, yeah, He said that when He consulted the people, He appointed those who should sing to the Lord. And who should praise the beauty of his holiness? That song says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole world. It's Mount Zion on the side of another city of the great king. It's Mount Zion on the side of another city of the great king. Amen. I want you to lift up your voices and begin to appreciate, the, uh, to appreciate God. Appreciate the beauty of his holiness. He appointed people that should sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Praise the beauty of his holiness. Praise the beauty of his holiness. Father, we thank you, Father, because you are holy. We thank you, Father, because you are great. We thank you, Father, because you are mighty. What a great and awesome God you are. What a mighty God you are. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, kapatari breke puzonto yi kriyadaraba. Me kupa santa ya brofo soto ye breke puzonto so bo. Ne kriede bo priana na bozo soto ri kiada. Kriede be de bia da ba da ba de beke poto ri breke bozo to yi breke bozo to yi breke bozo so soto ri. Ze ba da ba de be de ri breke kiada ba bozo to ri breke bosha. Let's take that song. It says, You are God. Yeah, you are God from beginning to the end. Hey, there's no place for argument. Oh Lord, you are God all by yourself. Hey, you are God, Lord. Oh Lord, hey, to the end. There's no Mighty God, say you are God. Oh Lord, hey, Bramado, Brike Boys, at the Deep Black Abos, at the Yikria Rabada, hey, Eddie Kierabo, Pobo, Sodo, Debria Kawasha. Oh, sing it, you are God, Lord, my Lord, my God. Hey, that's no place for us. God all by yourself say you are God Lord from the beginning to the end to the break up so to the break up shanda da da baka baka fria se vre beke po so 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 se beke bo shotu ye vre beke po ko so so Elohim your feet oh lord my god hey lord you alone i got it
Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. So great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, you are great and mighty. You are powerful, Jesus. Great are you, oh, Lord. So great, so great, so great. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise your name. You are the Alpha and Omega. Father, the beginning did not begin without you. We thank you, Father, because indeed you are God over all. We thank you, Father, Lord God, tonight, oh Lord, and especially, Lord, in this snow, for stepping, oh Lord, into our battles to enforce our victories. We give you all the glory and praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you because victory is ours. Thank you, Father, because we will not lose that battle. We hunger and we magnify you. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray tonight? Yes. Say, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. avail for me tonight. Say to me, defend me, secure my victory in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, avail for me tonight. Ma pu peteri in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, say to me tonight. Blood of Jesus, defend me tonight. Blood of Jesus, secure my victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Vre pa ka pa santa ya pra ka pa zata ya bra ka po zoto ye breke bo ze kreke te zende ye breke pu zonto li pra ka ba shandaria yes oh lord secure our victory for in jesus precious name we are prayed exodus 3 9 to 10 he says now therefore behold the cry of the children of israel has come to me and i have also seen the oppression with which the with which the egyptians oppressed them come now therefore and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. As we deal with the battle cry in this snow, know that the cry of people who are genuinely committed to God will always get God's attention. We're going to pray. The children of Israel cried, and immediately they cried. The Bible says that God dispatched a deliverer. We are going to be praying. You need to know, people of God, that there is no problem on earth that does not have a solution. Even spiritual problem, God has anointed his servant to take care of, the, of those problems. There is no problem of yours, no matter how difficult, no matter how difficult you think it may be, that God will have to go to the lab to go and recreate a solution for you. We are going to pray, people of God. The people of Israel cried and God said, I heard their cry. He said, come. You know, please, I, I want you to look at what God said. Verse 10. When they cried, God said, God told Moses, he said, come when? God said, come now. So it, me, it, it means that abandon what you are doing because my people have cried. Therefore, you want to pray. You say, Father, Father. whoever you have equipped, to bring me out of my battles and struggles. Father, dispatch them to me now. Let them locate me before this snow ends. See, I, 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 don't know what, I, don't know what, I don't know what you need. I don't know what you are interested in. But people of God, I want to tell you, even no matter what it is, God has it in somebody's hand. When God wants to bless his people, all he needs is, you know, the blessing will change. It will change hands. Say, Father, whoever you have equipped 
to bring me out of my battles and struggles. Father, despite them to me now. Let them locate me before this no ends. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God. Whoever you have equipped, oh Lord, to bring me out of my battles, to bring me out of my struggles, dispatch them now. My Lord and my God, dispatch them now. In the name of Jesus. Let them locate me before this no ends. In the precious name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are praying. That Exodus chapter 3 verse 19 and 20. God said, he said, but I am sure that the king of Israel will not let you go. God dispatched a, a, you know, an helper, a deliverer. And God was telling him, he said, I know that the king of Israel will not let them go. He said, not even by a mighty hand. Then I was thinking, he said, not even by a mighty hand. But if you read, if you read verse 20, God said, he said, so I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders. When there are certain hands, you know, that will land upon you, that you know that, yes, say this is mighty. Say this problem is great. I, you know, this, pro this problem is really, really heavy. I don't know what I can make out of this. But whatever you call a mighty hand is different from God's hand. God equated it, you know, to God can say, okay, it's a mighty hand. But you see, if God will have to bring out his hand, it will displace any form of mightiness. You know, God, can, you know God, God did not equate his own hand to the hand of Pharaoh. You see, there are mighty hands, though, but God's hand. And that's why the, the scripture says that the, the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. God, God said, I will only bring out my hand. But let them use their own mightiness. But my hand will bring, I, I will strike Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in, 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 in its midst. And after, he will let you go. When Pharaoh saw God's hand, any enemy that sees God's hand, anyone that sees God's hand fighting on your behalf, they must let go. Even when they tell you no, the moment they see God's hand, they will say, that thing that I said yesterday, I'm no longer interested. I've, I've, I've removed my hand. Why? Because they have seen God's hand. You want to pray, people of God. You want to pray. Father, by your mighty hand, break down the defenses of my enemies and give me victory. One minute, please. When Pharaoh saw the hand of God, when Pharaoh saw the hand of God, what, is, um, what did his magician say? He said, ah, this one is a finger of God. God was still talking about hand, meaning that at that point, God has not even brought out everything. This is the hand. Maybe God just showed them the smallest one. And he said, ah, we can see, a, we can see the finger of God. We better let these people go before God reveals all his hand. So you want to pray that, Father, by your mighty hand, break down the defenses of my enemies and give me victory. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and begin to pray. Pray, 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 pray. My Father, my God, by your mighty hand, O oh Lord, break down the defenses of my enemies. Break down all of the defenses, all of the powers springing up battles in my life. In the name of Jesus, and give me victory. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Our text in Joshua chapter 6 verse 20 and 21. The scripture says in Joshua 6, 20 and 21 that there was a cry. They blew the trumpet and the wall fell flat. But we need to see what happened in verse 1. Verse 1, please. The Bible says that Jericho, now Jericho was securely shot. Because of who? 
See, Jericho, Jericho was very significant, people of God. Jericho was significant to the progress of God's people because Jericho was one of the strongest fortress in the Jordan Valley. It was the strongest fortress of Canaan. And they knew that if we are able to bring Jericho down, Canaan is easy to possess. Jericho was the strongest of all the fortresses in the Jordan Valley. Jericho was shot because the children of Israel must not get to their promised land. Jericho was shot so that the enemy will make God a liar. Jericho is very significant. For example, if somebody says, okay, that you want to travel around the world and you get a Ghanaian visa. Yeah, Ghanaian visa can take you to Nigeria. It will take you to Ghana. But can you compare it to being an American citizen? It will open the world to you anywhere you want to go. So Jericho was shot because of the children of Israel. Why? Because Jericho is a passage for them to get into Canaan. And it was shot because of them. And there is no way they can go around Jericho. We're going to be praying, people of God. Every power that wants to make God a liar in your life, they are destroyed tonight in Jesus' name. If you think that some policies and decisions were not meant for you, why, why then are they stopping you? They're going to pray. You say, Father! In the name of Jesus, you are the mighty man of war. Every symbolic Jericho standing between me and my rest, standing between me and my promised land. Father, by your mighty hand, destroy them. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Every symbolic Jericho that is standing between me and my promised land that wants to make you go the liar ke pata pare proko santo ye prie debo ke manda bazanta ye break up santo ye break ya ta sata ya kraka baba by your mighty hand destroy them destroy them destroy them destroy them destroy them in the name of Jesus father destroy them in the precious name of Jesus For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Verse 5 says, It came to pass when they made a long blast with the ram's horn. <laughs> when and when you hear the sound of a trumpet, and all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Now, the word that I know about, if a city is, is, is short, you know, just like when you want to enter a place, you don't enter a place, you know, you don't enter a house from the walls on every side. Everybody, you have to gather to the door. Even if you are a million, you still have to file in. But because Jericho wanted to make God the liar, God made the wall to fall flat. And everybody, in fact, every part of Jericho was a door. Every part of Jericho was a door. They went straight in. You want to pray, people of God. You are going to see, the, the, uh, uh, the Lord mentioned, the Lord said that they cried. So don't just sit down or stand up and say, God, they cried. The Bible says that they cried. They shouted. And what happened? The wall fell flat. You want to pray? Say, Father, as I begin to pray, let every limitation that has hindered me thus far give way now. Pray, pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Zepra posonto ye preke posonto ye kriata sata ya krakaba meke popoto rubra pasanda ya krakata every limitation that has hindered me so thus far in the name of Jesus Father ye preke posonto ye preke posonto ye preke bo let them give way now in the name of Jesus no more hindrance in the name of Jesus for in Jesus precious name we are praying. You want to pray, say, Father, whoever is sitting in the dark and firing demonic arrows, 
I stand upon the rock of ages and I decree their destruction now. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This prayer came as a revelation that God showed me. I saw someone in, in, uh, uh, someone in a hood and he was backing up into a dark place. Backing up into a dark place, dark, dark place as if the person is hiding. We're going to pray. Say, Father, Father. whoever is sitting in the dark and firing demonic arrows, I stand upon the rock of ages and I decree their destruction now. Go ahead and begin to pray. My Lord and my God, whoever is sitting in the dark, firing demonic arrows into our church, into families represented in House of Change, into the lives of our children, into the works of our hands. I stand upon the rock of ages in the name of Jesus and I decree their destruction now. Fire of the Holy Ghost, consume them now in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. You see, one thing is that even if you, are, if you, if you, are, if you deceive others, you won't deceive yourself. As we are now, if you are praying, you know. So be your own judge. But one thing I know, people of God, this ground is a solution ground. Amen. If you will lift up your voices and pray, <laughs> the scripture says nothing is impossible to him that believes. You want to pray. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 23, it's quite long. I may not be able to read it. 2 Samuel chapter 23. He talks about the mighty men of David. The Bible mentioned that there was one, uh, there was one uh, uh, called uh, 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 Joseph, Joseph Bashel, the Tachmonite. The Bible said concerning him that he killed 800 men one time. Now, don't ask me how we did it, but I believe because it's written in the scriptures. He said he killed 800 men at once. But remember that the Bible did not call him an ordinary man. The Bible called him a mighty man. How can somebody kill 800 men at once? All right. There's another one. There's another one called Eleazar, the son of Dodo. The Haohite. Is the Bible mentioned concerning him that the Philistines, they gathered for battle and the men of Israel retreated. But he, he stood ground. He stood ground. And the Bible said that when he was fighting and fighting, his hand was weary. It happened that the sword stuck to his hand. See, I'm holding the mic. But it so happened, you know, that his hand was weary. He opened his hand. The, the, the sword refused to leave the hand. And he, he continued killing. He continued killing. You know, there are other ones, you know, Shama, the son of Age. You know, he stood and defended the land. He killed, Philist he killed the Philistines. And it happened, you know, there are about 30, you know, of them. Now, the Bible, now we're going to be praying, people of God. You see, this caliber of people, they are the people that you don't want them to be against you. David had a lot of battle. He fought the battles. He won the battles, but he did not fight it alone. He needed the mighty man. Therefore, you want to pray, people of God. You want to pray. God positioned mighty men to help David out. They were the ones that God used to help him to the throne. For you to get to your throne, you need these people, people of God. Wherever they are, God will gather them. And you know something? The Bible did not say that David was going about and he was shopping for them. He said, you, do, do like this. Uh, no, 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 I'm not taking you. They came to David himself. They themselves. They came to him. You want to pray? Say, Father, let my life attract mighty men. Men and women of influence. Men and women of power. 
that will help me fight my battle to the throne you have prepared for me. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. My father, my father, let my life attract mighty men, O Lord. Men of influence, men of power. Oh Lord, that we help me fight my battles to the throne, to the throne that you have prepared for me. In the name of Jesus, my Lord, for in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Because of our time, please let's go to number 10. Number 10, prayers number 10. The Bible says in the book of Esther chapter 1, that now the 12th, in the 12th month, that is the month of Ada, on the 13th day, the Bible said that the time came for the king's command and de his decree to be executed. On that day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to what? They hoped to overpower them. Now, this was not something that they just, they just arranged. They just came together and said, okay, let's do this. We're going to do this on this day. This is something that has been planned over a year ago. But that day came, people of God. The Bible said that I love the way the, the scriptures put it. It said they hoped to overpower them. They had planned it. They had, exit, they had finished it. But you know what happened? It was the opposite. I don't know who the devil has said that will not see the end of this year. The opposite is that you will see it. Amen. If the devil has said that you, will, that, that you will end this year in sickness, it is the opposite that will happen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That did not end there. He said that the opposite occurred in that the Jews themselves over, overpowered those who what? Oh God. We're going to be praying, people of God. You will say, you see, you will say, you battle that has been programmed to manifest at certain point or seasons in my life. I deprogram you. See, whatever the enemy has programmed in your life, whatever the enemy has programmed in your life, we want to pray because we are fighting from the point of victory. We are fighting with a mandate. We know who is backing us up. We know who is backing us up. We will, we will bring our decrees even to manifestation. So you want to pray. You say it's a decree. You say you battle that has been programmed to manifest a certain point, a certain junctions, a certain seasons of my life. I deprogram you now in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray. Whatever thing the enemy has set in place, whatever thing they have set in place in form of a bomb, hey, to go off on a particular season or a particular time in your life. As a servant of the Almighty God, I deprogram them now. In the name of Jesus, everything that the enemy has programmed to manifest at certain junctions, at certain points in my life, in the name of Jesus, I deprogram you. I deprogram you. I deprogram you. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In the book of Luke chapter 8, the Bible says that the devil, he put 6,000 demons in one man. Now, when you talk about 6,000 demons, you will even wonder, that, so how many, how, many, how many are the demons saved? If one, if, if one person can house 6,000. But you know something, the Bible said 
that when Jesus got there, the demons, they cried out. There is no way Jesus can be in a place and demons will be there. The demons had to leave town. He said, we know you are here. We cannot, we can, we can, we cannot, we cannot drag your, we cannot drag, you know, your territory. And you know something? Anywhere Jesus got to is, is, is a territory for him. And that's why the scripture says that anywhere the sole of our feet treads, it has become our territory. So the moment Jesus got there for, for, for years, nobody dared to pass that place. If you pass that place, that demon will take clothes from you. But when Jesus got there, the demon begged. He said, we know now that you are here, let's, let's go to the other side. And Jesus allowed. They went into the swine. This wine. And what happened? God, Jesus moved them out of town. So anywhere you get to is a no-go area for the devil. And that's why you want to pray, people of God. We want to pray. We're going to be praying. We're praying tonight. We're going to be praying that you say, Father, by your divine intervention, shut down every activity of demons in my life, in my family, in the works of my hands, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray in Jesus' name. Father, 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 by your divine intervention, shut down every activity of demons in my family, in the work of my hands, in the precious name of Jesus, in my life, in my ministry. Kapotori preke man santa ya proposon do de kriye ke te zeteria. Ze freke po soto ye preke po soto ye preke po se paria. Besente te teri preke po soto ye preke po soto ye preke po. For in Jesus precious name we are prayed. In Jesus name we are prayed. People of God, there are some battles that can only be won on the platform of mercy. I read in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, talking about blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus, I don't know how we contacted the blindness. I don't know how it happened. But blind Bartimaeus could not approach Jesus on any other grounds except on the ground of mercy. Maybe it was bad. You know, and something happened and he lost his sight, you know, and things like that. But from the way he approached Jesus, it was like I could sense that I know that I'm at fault. But please, just have mercy on me. I know that your mercy can overlook all these things that I have done and step in. You want to pray, people of God. You say, Father... In your mercy, terminate every demonic seed manifesting as, as long standing battles in my life. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray. Father, in your mercy, arise, O oh Lord. Terminate every demonic seed manifesting as long standing battles, manifesting as any kind of battle in my life, in my family, in the household of faith. In the lives of my children, Papu commentary break a push soto senke shieteria. In anything no longer that pertains to me, in the name of Jesus, Zema kapatari break a push soto ye break a push soto ye break a push. Zekre kete sete ye break a push soto ye break a push. Zebrek a push soto ye bria namasa kaya krakata sanda. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Thank you for praying. We're almost done. We're going to be praying, people of God. You see, when you lose battles, you become a stranger to the destiny you were born to fulfill. Mephibosheth was born as a prince. 
probably one day to take on the throne of his, of his father. To take on the throne, you know, of his grandfather. If, uh, if, if Jonathan has also be, uh, become a king, you know, would have taken the throne of his father. But the Bible mentioned that he suffered an injury during a battle. Something happened. And a nurse picked him up and he was running away and, you know, he fell and he sustained an injury. And as a result of that injury, that injury landed him in Lodiba. Lodiba was not a... What, Lodiba, Lodiba was not a place that was made for princes. But something happened in his life. He sustained an injury. There was a battle that came up. And he became a stranger even to the throne. You want to pray, people of God. There are people here that can point to singular event that a singular event that occurred that landed them in the mess that they are today. You can say, ah! This thing happened 13 years ago. Many people will still remember the date. That if not for that thing that happened that day, I'm not going to be where I am today. The sons of the prophet, they pointed to where the axe fell. They said, ah, man of God, this is the place. This is the place. The men of Jericho, they took Elisha to the source that was springing water. They said, this is, he went there. They would identify the source. Therefore, you want to pray, people of God. You want to pray. You will say, turn down of the Almighty God. Locate and destroy every altar springing battles into my life. Locate and destroy every altar springing forth battles into my life. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and begin to pray, 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 pray. Ma popeteri break here, Thunder of your mighty God, locate, destroy every altar, springing for battles, springing for battles. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. I have a question for you. Where, what do you do when your battle is from home? What do you do when your battle is from people that you cannot avoid? What do you do when your battle is from people you know that you sit together, you smile together, they advise you. You know, you go to places together, you spend time together. What do you do? Jesus said in Matthew 10, 36, that a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Psalm 18, verse 17 says, He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. Any battle that you are, that you are stronger than cannot overcome you. So therefore, the solution is that we need to pray that God should make us stronger than any battle, wherever it may be coming from. But as long as you are stronger, that no matter what the scheme, they will put poison in your food. It will turn to vitamin. Say, so where did you get that food from? I need more. <laughs> they will start crying. I will start confessing. <laughs> they will start confessing. They say, ah, what happened to Paul? What happened to Paul? Well, he shook the beast. We, when the beast beat him and they were like, uh, he will soon die. Just give him five minutes. But when it happened that he did not, he did not die, the Bible said they changed their mind. He said, you must be a God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Father, Father make, me the make me the champion over every battle I must fight. <laughs> Equip me with wisdom <laughs> and power <laughs> to overcome spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and begin to pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pa kupe manda pari breke pusotoria. Kadaba zamba ya braka pozoto ye breke bo, soto ye breke bo. Make me the champion over every battle I must fight. In the name of Jesus.
Father, I pray that you equip me, O oh Lord, with power. Equip me with wisdom to overcome, to overcome spiritually, to overcome mentally, to overcome emotionally, to overcome physically, to overcome in all realms. In the precious name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In 2 Samuel 11, David triggered a battle and a generational judgment was passed. If you read 2 Samuel chapter 12, you will see where he said, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me. For you have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives from before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and it shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. A generational judgment was passed. The judgment was passed in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And in, you know, it, it kicked in immediately. Because in verse 13, Amnon started messing up. When he was lost in after Tama, he didn't know that he was being driven. He was sitting at the back of a course, you know, and the, the course was driving him. He didn't know that he was driving him to his own destruction. He didn't know he was under an influence. In Genesis chapter 4, Cain did something and God asked him, he said, Cain, what have you done? He said, this one that you have done, he said, your brother's voice, is, your brother's blood is crying to me he's crying out from the ground he said because of this he said Cain you are cursed they're going to pray people of God you want to pray against battles that you have triggered as in yourself and also battles that have that are generational battles that have been triggered by generations you know before you battles that you are fighting that you don't even know the head you don't even know how he came into place. You want to pray, say, Father, in your mercy, put an end to every generational and self-triggered battle in my life, in my lineage, and silence every voice crying for judgment against my destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and begin to pray in Jesus' name. Pray, 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 pray. Ma popeteri breke puso toriada. Father, put an end to generational and self-triggered battles in my life, in my lineage. Silence voices, O Lord, crying for judgment against my destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, put an end to it. Put an end to it. Put an end. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Lastly, we want to pray. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. What does, uh, uh, what does it say? It say, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. You want to pray? That Father has from now. Let a new order begin. <laughs> a new order of peace. A new order of victory. A new order of unending joy. A new order of celebration. In the name of Jesus. As from now. Say, Father, according to your word, let a new order begin in my life. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Pray, 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 pray. Go ahead and begin to pray in Jesus' name.
In Jesus' name, we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again. The righteous man crieth, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth him from all his troubles. We thank you for another opportunity to call upon you tonight. He said, call upon me, and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. Thank you for the grace to call, and thank you for the blessing of answered prayer. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Every battle we have dragged to your presence today, let them all be vanquished in Jesus' name. Every struggle that we have brought to you today, let them all be permanently silenced in Jesus' name. Let victory be delivered into our hands. Let a new experience start. Let a new order start. A new experience of joy, of peace, of victory, of rest, of signs and wonders, of progress, of open heavens. Let it begin in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your servant, Lord. Bless him richly. Re-equip him. Replenish him. Re-anoint him. Refire him. Let him always be a blessing to his generation. Let him be the partaker of the first fruit of this ministration of tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.